Sally, will you please connect me with the Green Shampoo Show Rehearsal Studio A? Just a moment, please. Hello. Hello, Webster. I'm upstairs in the executive offices of NBC. Has Katina Paxson arrived yet? Not yet, Mr. Valley, but everybody else is here. We're just waiting for you. Well, I'll be down in a few minutes. In the meantime, have Frank Duvall take Mel and the Mel Tones through their number. Very well, Mr. Valley. Frank, Mr. Valley would like you to run through back home again in Indiana with the Mel Tones, please. <laughs> Don't stick your head in that door. Don't you know there are really valet rehearsals going on in there? Oh, I was just taking a peek. Well, do a little less peeking and start doing a little more working. Pardon me, boys. Would you mind letting me through? Not at all, Mr. Valley. Not at all. <laughs> you know what they... What? Mr. Valley tipped me yesterday. No. How much did he give you? I ain't saying. But I spent it for a newspaper and didn't have to wait for the change. <laughs> You know one thing, man, then I'm going to quit this job. Quit? Yeah. What is the matter with you? You're always talking about quitting. What is the matter with you? I'm a sick man, man, Tim. Sick? You're always complaining about something that you ain't got and you couldn't have even if you had it. <laughs> man, Tim, I got it. You got what? Well, it's a kind of a feeling that starts up... I had that once. <laughs> a kind of a feeling that starts right along... That's low... it. <laughs> Well, what are you doing for it? Well, I saw myself a doctor, and he gave me a bottle Don't of... Don't take them, they'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the physician that prescribed that for you? A doctor is out he here He ain't no time. good. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor you want is a doctor to live up here? I had him. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, in that case, what you need is one of them cutting doctors. A sturgeon. <laughs> a man that will cooperate on you. One will take his knife and make a cut. I had mine taken out last year. You see, I thought maybe... It couldn't be that. <laughs> Why don't you try some of those pills that my brother took when he was suffering from what he caught when he was out was in... Was he out there? <laughs> sure. 
I spun all the time. He, he did, a... but he come back. <laughs> Yeah, what's he doing? He's working. Where is he working? He's working down here for a man, and they paying him a salary. That of... ain't no money at all. <laughs> Cause I guess he... you got him wrong. You got him wrong. <laughs> he's gonna get married. No. Yeah, he's gonna marry the daughter of Miss. She's a nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> but wait a minute. Hmm? Let me tell you something. What's that? What's the matter? One time I had... That was her sister. <laughs> I'm keeping company with her. <laughs> I've been keeping company with her now ever since. I didn't know you'd been knowing her that long. Sure. I thought all the time... He was, but I cut him out. <laughs> well, man, Dan, that's funny. I was talking to her dad yesterday. Yeah? And the first thing I know... That was your fault. <laughs> now, what you should have done was... I did. <laughs> see that, Ben? What? That's why I like to talk to you. Yeah. Because me and you seem to agree with each other. We sure do, do we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Why don't you come up to my house and have dinner sometimes? Have dinner with you? That's right. Up to your house? That's right. Where's you dodging rent now? Now, I live out I here. I got a brother living in that house. <laughs> I'll be there. I won't be home then. <laughs> when will you be home? Well, now, the best time to catch that me. That suits me. What hour? Well, any time between. That's a little early, but I'll dig you. I'm looking for you now. I'll report. Keep in touch with Once me. A world-shaking radio premiere of a song, the ink of which is hardly dry. In the vein of heartbreak of empty arms and loneliness, I can't put my arms around a memory. Cause I can't put my arms around a memory. Around a memory of The rapture star, for you're not really at my side, you're only in my heart. I can't kiss a dream no matter how I try, still that is what I try to. Put my arms around a So easy to love, so easy. 
Well, girls, when a fellow starts telling you things like that, you can be pretty sure he's playing for keeps. And if you want some special man to feel that way about you, remember this. You've got to be easy in the eyes before a man finds you so easy to love and idolize. Yes, Rudy, and nothing does so much for a girl's looks as glamorous, shining hair. The kind of hair that sparkles with highlights and gleams with luster. That's why you ought to use Dream Shampoo with hair conditioner every time you wash your hair. You'll get a combination of beauty advantages found in no other shampoo. Why, Dreen actually reveals up to 33% more luster than any soap or soap shampoo. Dreen with hair conditioner never leaves any dulling film, as all soaps do, to hide the natural luster of your hair. It brings out all the shining beauty. And now that this new improved Dreen contains a marvelous hair conditioner, it leaves your hair far silkier, smoother, easier to manage right after shampooing. No other shampoo, not a soap in the world, leaves your hair so lustrous and yet so easy to manage. Only Dreen with hair conditioner. So, girls, for lovely shining hair that makes it easy for a man to fall in love with you, always use Dreen shampoo with hair conditioner. Rudy Valley Rehearsal, Studio A. Hello, Miss Webster. This is Edith Gwynn. I'm down here at the Hollywood Reporter putting the finishing touches on my column. Aren't you coming over to rehearsal? Can't possibly make it, but I've got all the items I'm going to do on the air right here. Will you take them down, please? All right. I'm ready, Miss Gwynn. Well, Sonia Henney is supposed to be making a skating tour of the United States as soon as she finishes at the pleasure, her latest picture. But don't be surprised if she cancels that tour and makes a beeline for Hawaii. Her husband, Captain Dan Topping, telephoned her from Honolulu the other night and begged her to come on over to the islands and do some personal appearances there instead. Sonia hasn't made up her mind. Okay, got it. Someone else who can't make up his mind is Niven Bush, who wrote the bestseller, Duel in the Sun. First he wanted to borrow Veronica Lake to play in it, then Sylvia Sidney. But I predict that when it goes before the cameras, Hedy Lamar will be the star. What's in the gossip department? Jane Hamilton, who once had a movie contract at RKO Studio, is divorcing her husband, Bill Hollingsworth, and I think she will marry movie star Ellen Curtis when she's free. And another marriage in the offing is that of Martha Kemp Mature, divorced wife of Victor Mature, who will waltz down the aisle with Dr. Maynard Bransmer. He's a well-known physician. And I have something for the sports department, too. What could that be? Well, Tallulah Bankhead, who has always said she couldn't even hold the racket, and who never gets out of bed until mid-afternoon unless she has to work, has been playing tennis like mad lately, and guess with whom? Well, whom? With Catherine Hepburn and Garbo, that's whom. And tennis champ Bill Tilden is around most of the time coaching. All this goes on over at Clifton Webb's house, and the games are slightly hysterical. Anything else? That's about all, except that Artie Shaw, who was putting on a big campaign for the affection of Ava Gardner, will have to do some mighty fancy tooting because he's outflanked on one side by director Mervyn Leroy and on the other by producer Howard Hughes. And when I hang up, tell everybody to start leveling off their rooftops now. Randolph Scott, Cary Grant, and Johnny Maschio, he's Constance Moore's husband, are forming a company to make helicopter planes as soon as the war is over. Well, so long. Gee, you're lucky to have Katina Paxinou on the show this week. I can't describe the wonderful quality she has, but the Greeks have a word for it. Bye-bye. Mr. Valley, that Doodles Weaver person is here to see you again. He wants to audition for you. This is the fourth time today. Doodles Weaver? Oh, well, we might as well get it over with. Send him in. Never mind, never mind. I'm in. And as for you, Rudy Valley, I'm surprised at you. You who go around singing, my time is your time. And what's wrong with that? Well, I can never get a minute of it. Be that as it may, now that you're here, just what are you going to do? Well, you ought to let me do something. After all, I came down here at great expense, $400 bail. (laughs) All right, proceed. Ladies and gentlemen, for thrills and spills, we bring you one of the favorite sporting events of the world, the 500-mile classic at Indianapolis with your favorite sports announcer, Clem McHusing. And first, our sponsor, who brings you this program, has a few words to say. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure and buy a package of (coughs) cigarettes when you go to the drugstore. 
Throw down the money, say, give me a package of <laughs> cigarettes. And remember, as you buy them, that <laughs> spelled backwards is... <laughs> <laughs> and now, if you are ready, Clem McHusing at Indianapolis, it's all yours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clem McHusing in the press box at Indianapolis. It's a beautiful day for the races out here. The sun is out. There's not a cloud in the sky. 150,000 people waiting for this great event. I can see the entire track from here, two and a half miles to my right, two and a half miles across, a five miles straight away, two and a half miles back here, two and a half miles to me in the press box. Now, oh, I'm telling you, the infield is packed with cars, people standing on their cars on the fenders, looking into the binoculars for these cars to start. And now the boys are down there. Get your pencils and papers out for the starting lap of the follows. There's number 10 with Soren Paulson on the inside, Brother Gentry driving 45, 30 other beautiful cars, all different colors out here. It's going to be a great race, I'm sure. And I know the boys are ready. Now, the green flag is waving. The boys are ready to go. They're going to the first turn on the get right the perfect stars to go on the first turn and they get her. There they go! 18 or 19, 14, 17, 31, 105, all the, all the bunch together going into the first turn, I believe. I don't see how they can avoid an accident. They go in the back stretch. They can't avoid that accident, but they do some way. They do. Four, a green car, a blue car, a car, 10, 4, 17, right behind him, turning right close. I've never seen right in the This boy drives like fiends. Number 10 has got three legs on the next car. Here they come around, 135, 45, 55, 65, sold. Oh, no, no. <laughs> First car by the stands of number 10. Look at that number 10. Come, here comes number 10. Everybody, here comes number 10. Four, five, 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 eight, five. There's a wreck. There's a wreck on the prior turn. There's a man skidding. He's skidding on the track. He's skidding around backwards, forward, sideways. Unless he's careful, he's going to hit the fence. Oh, he didn't hit it all. Oh, he didn't hit the fence. He hit it. <laughs> this is Clem McHusing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Clem McHusing. I'm here in the stands. I have a great idea. My assistant, John, is on the track. I'll have him cross the track and have the driver that fast say a word or two so everybody knows it's perfectly okay. It's all going to take it down the road, but be careful crossing the track, John. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Uh, I'm down on the track. Uh, I'm going to cross the track and have the driver say a word in that car. I want to tell you people listening in. Uh, <laughs> one by there. I want to tell you people listening in. <laughs> Three went by there. Well, uh, there's the green, green man. I'll cross the track now. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I was pretty close, folks. It was so close, I almost put my foot off. Wow, well, great. <laughs> I my foot off. Uh-huh. Uh, here's the driver of that car, driver Munson, and car number 21. Say a few words. Let everybody know that you're perfectly okay. Well, <laughs> He just took the ground in that car. He's perfectly all right. Take him away, boys. Don't forget that leg. Uh, <laughs> take it upstairs. Then. I'm signing off down here. Clem McHusing, take it upstairs. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Clem McHusing back in the front for the finish of the races. We're almost through on here. For you people to tune in late, the best band on here today is number 13. That boy is ready to move. There he goes now. Look at that number 13 go. He's passing everybody. I never saw anybody drive so fast in my whole life. There he goes again. Look at that number 13 go. There he goes again. Look at that. There he goes again. He went by twice. <laughs> On the turn, here comes a little midget, a little midget racer, one of those famous midget racers coming down here. Looks like a little midget driven by B. Avalon. Look at that little midget come down here, come the midget. Midget racer went. Three, four, five, oh. B29. Where did that come from? Must be in the wrong place. Four, five. Oh, look at this car. It's all mixed up. Look at that car. Look at that car. Here it goes the other way. A woman driver. <laughs> Three, four, and now, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for get ready for your winner. Here comes the winner coming down here. Everybody's cheering him. Look at the winner comes down. The winner. Here comes the winner and the winner. <laughs> Whirl away. The most beautiful girl in the world picks my tires out, eats my candy, drinks my brandy. The most beautiful girl in the world The most beautiful face in the world May be simple But a dimple makes that simple Little face, the most beautiful face in the world So show not a bit Natural kind of wit She'd shine in me and she hasn't got platinum hair. The most beautiful house in the world has a chimney, and by chimney, beneath that chimney, all my slippers are next to the ones that belong to the one and only beautiful girl in the world. Not a bit 
hasn't got platinum hair. The most beautiful house in the world has a chimney, and by chimney, neath that chimney, all my slippers are next to the ones that belong to the one and only beautiful girl. Tina Paxinou, Mr. Valley. Welcome to the dream show, Miss Paxinou. As you enter these portals, it is as though the glory of Greece had entered with you. It's very nice of you to say that. And I feel fortunate indeed that you consented to visit with us before you left for New York to star on the play Sophie Helenschik, American. I know you'll be as outstanding in that play as you were in Paramount's picture, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Thank you. But I have a little confession to make. When you won the Academy Award for your performance in that picture, I didn't vote for you. Oh. <laughs> because I hadn't seen the picture. But after seeing the picture, I believe I'd have stuffed the ballot box. You are very flattering. And of all the scenes in the picture, the one that impressed me most was the one, you recall, where Maria, who was played by Ingrid Bergman, brought you out of the cave in the mountains to meet Robert Jordan, who was played by Gary Cooper. As I remember, Maria said to you... Pilar, this is the English, Mr. Jordan. Hola, English. Hola, Pilar. What was that gypsy saying about me? He said you were much woman. <laughs> and I'd say he's right. <laughs> and what were you saying to the girl here before I came out? Mm, nothing. I saw how she was from seeing you. He only joked with me, Pilar. Joke. Listen to me, English. She's young, not hardened as we are, and she's had a bad time. The worst time a woman can have, you understand? Yes, I guess so. When do you leave here? In three days, if I'm still alive. What made you say that? That way of speaking never brings luck. Let me see your hand. Well? Nothing. I saw nothing. What do you come for? To blow another train? No, a bridge. All the better. Now we have horses. Let's blow all the bridges and get out. I'm sick of this place. We are all rocking here because there's no fighting. Nothing to do but watch Pablo get drunk. Tell me, what did you see in my hand? I saw nothing. Yes, you did. I'm only curious, Pilar. I don't believe in such things. What did you see? I saw nothing. Wait, don't go. You should take a rest, Pilar. You are tired. Shut up, Maria. Nobody asked your advice. You think I'm an old woman, huh? Sit down, Pilar. <laughs> Many things, Tommy. One of them is to be old and ugly. And another is to see panic in the face of a boy when I say as a joke I might kiss him. That <laughs> could not happen. What do you know of it, you, with your face and your English? I have an evil temper today and I'm jealous. <laughs> How foolish. <laughs> I am an old, ugly old woman and I love you very much, child. I love you, too, and you are not ugly. Go on, I am not ugly. I was born ugly. Do you know how an ugly woman feels? Do you know what it is to be ugly all your life and to feel in your heart that you are beautiful? You are beautiful. Try to use your head and not your heart and listen. I'm telling you things of much interest. Does it interest you, English? Maria's right. Two of a kind. <laughs> you are a prize for any woman if you ever let go of yourself. And this one, this one is a gift to any man. If she could cook a little better. <laughs> Give me a cigarette and listen. Life is very curious. I would have made a good man. But I am all woman and all ugly. Yet many men have loved me. Is that strange? I don't think you're ugly. Don't lie to me. <laughs> or has it begun to work with you too, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, I am ugly. <laughs> Yet one can have a feeling here that blinds a man while he loves you. He thinks you're beautiful. And one day, for no reason at all, he sees you ugly as you really are. And he's not blind anymore. And then you see yourself as ugly as he sees you. 
and you lose your man and your feeling. And one day, the feeling, that idiotic feeling that you're beautiful, grows inside you again. And another man sees you and thinks you're beautiful. Then it's all to do over again. Now I'm past it. But it's still my thumb again. <laughs> Lift your head, Maria. This feeling is over. I was only jealous of your 19 years. It isn't the jealousy that lasts. You want to be always 90, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you see, I have evil thoughts, English. If I were 19, I would take you away from this crap head, this silly little girl. Mm -hmm. Even with my ugly face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Girls, how many times have you heard men say, she's gorgeous, she has the loveliest hair... Well, you'll never know how much beauty just a shampoo can bring to your hair until you try Dream with hair conditioner. Suppose you're washing your hair with soap, cake soap, liquid soap shampoo, or any other shampoo except Dream with hair conditioner. Well, listen. No soap, no other shampoo combines all the beauty advantages this wonderful new Dream brings you. Dream reveals up to 33% more luster than any kind of soap because it never leaves any dulling film on hair as all soaps do to hide the shining loveliness. And now that the new improved Dream contains a wonderful hair conditioner, it leaves hair far silkier, smoother, and easier to manage right after shampooing. Besides, Dream completely removes every trace of flaky dandruff the very first time you use it. No other shampoo of any sort combines such luster and such manageability with this complete removal of dandruff. Only Dream with hair conditioner. So a drugstore or beauty shop ask for Dream with hair conditioner. The only shampoo that can make your hair look so lovely. What did your Gruen say, Holly? Well, I guess that just about washes everything up for now, Rudy. What do you think about using Ben Carter and Manton Moreland, Doodles Weaver, Mel, and his singing kids again soon, Holly? Well, I'm for it. What about next week? Well, Martha Ray is all set, and 20th Century Fox is just okay BS pulley. Swell. Holly, will you join me for a bowl of soup at the Derby? No, thanks. I prefer a dream shampoo. I'm no fool. The most beautiful girl in the world Picks my pie out, eats my candy, drinks my brandy The most beautiful girl in the world Beautiful star in the world Isn't Gobble Isn't Dietrich But that neat trick Who can make me believe It's a beautiful world Rudy Valley presents another dream show For Dream Shampoo next Saturday at this same time See you then Good night <laughs> 